Before we start, I'd like to say a really special thanks to Nick Livesey who shot the uh, absolutely fabulous drone footage of me as I crossed the Pont Casilte aqueduct. Nick is a mountain guide, photographer and author and I would really really urge you to have a look at not only at his YouTube channel but also some of the beautiful images that he has done of Snowdonia. I'll leave all the links for Nick in the description box below. Please, please check out this exceptional talent. You won't be disappointed. In this episode, I cross over the border into Wales on the amazing Chirk Aqueduct. I encounter some extreme British eccentricity and I fly reverie in the stream in the sky. We are coming up to Chirk Aqueduct on the Welsh border and I've got to admit I feel like a kid waiting for Christmas. I have been waiting for this for such a long time. I've seen videos about it, I've seen photos of it it looks fabulous and actually I can I can see now I can see some arches which the arches must be the uh, the viaduct the train viaduct which runs alongside and yes I can see the aqueduct now as well fabulous Oh wow, just look at that, just look at that, what a piece of engineering, amazing. When we get onto the aqueduct, which I will be any moment now, we'll be travelling 70 foot high on a boat. Ooh, amazing! Now, having looked at the map, the river, the river is the border between England and Wales, is probably right below me at this moment in time. Yep, there it is, I can see it. Well, I'm officially in Wales now, how fabulous is that? What a view, look at that. Sensational. I'm just going to slow down, almost stop actually, I'm the only boat here, there's no boats coming, there's no boats behind me, absolutely amazing. At the other end, um, you go straight into a tunnel, uh, there's a winding hole and then a tunnel. This 220 metre long aqueduct was completed in 1801. It has 10 12 metre arches and took five years to complete. I stopped just for a few moments to take it all in and the flow of the water across the aqueduct and I've mentioned the flow of the uh, water on this canal before was just driving the boat backwards so I've just put it in tick over and I am just creeping over 
Uh, obviously on this side, this is the towpath side, so you can see that there's a fence there. On this side, there is no fence whatsoever. Just a 70 foot drop. And okay, there's like a four or five foot sort of wall or something, but um, yeah, fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, I am overwhelmed. I have to say I am overwhelmed by this. As boating experiences go, this has to be top of the list so far. creeping over I'm probably doing about half a mile an hour <laughs> fantastic Wonderment, absolute wonderment, isn't it just? I mean, what a feat of engineering. It's not just the aqueducts, but um, the viaduct as well. Now, it is said that the, that the viaduct was actually, which was actually built several years after, well, a couple of decades after the aqueduct. Um, it was said that uh, it was built higher than the aqueduct uh, in order to kind of prove the the superiorness of railway transport over canal transport but you know either way it is it is just a sensational piece of engineering crossing a valley like that absolutely sensational just look at it I'm now passing through the winding hole and straight into the 420 metre tunnel. Whoops, a bit too busy fiddling with the cameras. The tunnel can be quite shallow in places and requires a few more revs to maintain momentum. It takes about seven minutes to travel through. The tunnel is one of the easier ones I've been through to be honest. It's uh, more or less straight. It's completely brick lined. I think it's easier to steer as well because there's a, a, a tow path on one side. It gives you something to kind of focus on, you know? And into the light, which is a bit of a relief because the diesel fumes were beginning to get to me a little bit. What a fabulous, fabulous cruise that was. Doesn't get much better come out into a rather lovely cutting and I think it's probably time for me to moor up. The following morning started bright and sunny so I thought I'd go for a little walk before I set off. That sunshine didn't last long. Welcome to Wales.
here having a cup of tea and uh, all of a sudden I hear someone say hello nice afternoon of course I look to the towpath and I can't see anyone and then he says something else and I look over my shoulder and standing in the middle of the canal is a guy in a in a dry in a dry suit it's like a, a deep sea di divers dry suit um, and he's wearing on his head what can only be described as a golden plastic knight's helmet it's like a kid's toy kind of thing you know um, and I was just so dumbfounded I had no idea what to say to this guy he tried to engage me in conversation but it was just a bit too bewildering really um, and anyway he then obviously became quite bored because I didn't know what to say and wandered off up the canal into Chirp Marina and it was only then that I kind of thought well I should really try and film this now uh, don't get me wrong I'm, I'm a big advocate of British eccentricity but this is possibly taking it slightly too far who knows Ooh. About a quarter of a mile past Chirk Marina is White House Tunnel. At only 174 metres, it's a baby compared to Chirk. I thought I could see something in the tunnel, but no light, so I sounded my horn. Yeah, that's better. And I get a friendly wave from Owen's bear as I went by. Passing the moorings at Fronkasilchte, the aqueduct is getting quite close now and I'm beginning to get quite excited. Now this is interesting. Can he really steer from the bow or is it just for show? I don't know. It would be good fun steering from the pointy end though. Past the three water points and we really are quite close now. I am now approaching the Pont Casilte aqueduct um, and I have to admit I'm a little bit apprehensive about this. Um, having fallen 60 foot down a waterfall back in 1990 I'm not really very good with heights and it is a sheer 120 foot drop on this side to the ground um, and there is nothing but a few inches of um, cast iron <laughs> on this side so uh, this is going to be very interesting I think. Now you've got to admit, this aqueduct must be the high point, excuse the really bad pun, 
it must be the highlight of um, of this canal really um, it is the most remarkable piece of engineering and I am just coming on to it now uh, which like I say is a little bit scary there are railings on the towpath side and I'm just about to pass the final bit of railing on the other side on the off side Oh my god, that is, oh my god, that is just so incredible. <laughs> I mean, basically I'm in a metal trough and on this side there is like seven centimetres of cast iron. It is bizarre. I'm not too worried about the height at the minute. This is rather like being a flying boat. This is just absolutely incredible. Absolutely. <laughs> it's got to be one of the weirdest experiences of my life. There are 19 arches on this aqueduct and it is said that during the building of it um, ox blood was mixed with the mortar uh, in order to give the, the masonry piers more strength. They believed in rather weird things back in those days but then I suppose we do today too. If you look at the trough on this side, you will notice that it's not exactly straight. And I can only imagine that over the years it has been kind of dented and buckled by boats hitting into it. Which is kind of slightly worrying really, because I've already bashed the side a couple of times. <laughs> um, and yeah, there really isn't an awful lot to stop you going right over the edge. I'm just about to go over the River Dee now. Now there is actually in the towpath a plug which empties out the um, uh, right. I think I'm going to have to wait a little bit for uh, all the Chinese people to go past on the towpath. I am at the moment just crossing the River Dee and on the towpath side there is actually a plug. Now the trough in the aqueduct is emptied I think it's every seven years so that maintenance can be carried out and all the silt emptied out and they check for rust and all that sort of thing. But basically once they pull the plug all the water in the aqueduct just empties 120 odd feet into the River Dee below. That must be quite the size actually.
and I've got to say, that was absolutely fabulous experience. Absolutely fabulous. It really is the stream in the sky. Thanks once again to Nick Livesey for the wonderful drone footage and please check out the description box to see more of Nick's work. If you made it this far, please hit that like button or, better still, subscribe to come along and join me on future travels. And I'd be really grateful if you could share this vlog on your social media outlets. I'll soon be doing a vlog on viewers questions so if you have anything you'd like to know ask me in the comments below and next time I'll be doing a special on aqueducts and viaducts see you then